So you guys can use uh, my sequence, we can use the one Candice was just teaching. And then I've just got a few quick questions. Um, I find it really hard when my feet were close up here. And it yeah. was just like pulling here in my groin. So yeah. possibly it's easy for you, but it's really hard. it was really hard for me. And it's not like I've never done it. Um, but I, I struggled there. So what would I do? Um, because we do want that as a variation, but we also want yeah, the one... You always, you, you're just going to focus always, as we you know, spoke about with the shoulders to modify, you're going to modify. So if your hamstrings are not flexible, if you're still working in that area, you find it really tight, we don't want any form of your practice to cause any pain or discomfort. So you're just going to adjust the heels to where your body's at, or again, taking pillows or blocks, giving yourself a little bit of support underneath the thigh or knee. So when you're bringing the body down, you can feel. If that doesn't feel right, you're going to adjust the heels slightly, modify, so that you're comfortable. You don't have to have the heels all the way in if you're not flexible. And as you work with the breath, as you develop with your yoga practice, it'll become easier. You're going to work through it slowly, working with your body, not against it. So what I sometimes do as well uh, when I practice on my own or in a, in a teaching is I would just come right out of the posture and then move the legs to something kind of complementary opposite like that and then try again that, that little bit of release time. A little release time and also to windshield wipe the knees. That's something I use in the practice a lot. So you right. just feel yeah, yeah. your hips, creating that little bit of movement. Yeah, so I definitely use that one a lot as well. So talking yeah, so about the, uh, like the knees, I've also got some clients who can't bring their feet into butterfly. They might have had knee surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and what they'll do is do the same thing. They'll just keep the legs extended. And when they fall, they reach the arms all the way up high and come down, possibly even bending the knees a little here yeah, if yeah, the yeah. hamstrings are still really tight. So you can just modify, and that's what's beautiful about yoga, to modify the postures to work with your body. So if we can recap, uh, just a few comments that is becoming quite evident here um, in this uh, little workshop uh, video is that if we take uh, the section that I was teaching and sharing with you and then we take your section, they could actually form two laps of a, of a, of a similar practice. So say we, we were running fast through the first one and it took about five minutes and we see how we would maybe want to do something for another five minutes. We could literally uh, take the, the practice that you were teaching with some slight variation, and then we could even do a third one without watching the video and just experiencing it for ourselves, and like, and then deliberately switching off the video and thinking about it and saying to ourselves when we practice on our own, oh, what was that? Oh, do I, did I feel like going to the side? Oh yes, and then as you start to feel the one movement leading to the next, you may suddenly remember, yeah, I'm going to do this for a minute and then switch around to the other side, so that we learn to, to listen to our body, so the body suggests what do we need to do next. And the body at this point, you know, after doing the butterfly, that will tell you, like, I want to straighten out my legs. And it's mm -hmm. going to tell you, like, I want to open up to this energy, so that uh, the life force can flow from the leg down, we can meet new breath, and literally when you take the leg up there, the old life force in the leg flows out there, meets the new life force, we, we breathe it out, and then we're ready to go forward and come up and do a meditation. So we start to use our practice so that we become more body wise, that our body has wisdom. And by just looking on screen and doing the practice, and going, what's next, what's next? We don't uh, teach ourselves the intelligence to wake up in the morning and just go like, what do I feel like doing? Something like that. Your body should say, hey, why don't you do this now? Yeah. Uh, we should naturally just start doing this when we wake up in the morning. Why don't you do this quickly before uh, breakfast, for instance, so that your body digests better? And it's less is more, so having a few, you know, simple steps like these, simple postures, even if they are sitting postures, stretching postures, 
you know, hugging the knees into the chest when you wake up in the morning. But having these, it's creating the new habits. So the more you do it, the more you'll naturally just start to do it when you wake up. Yeah, yeah. So one of the one of the um, the benefits of that would be exactly that your body will naturally wake up, and you teach it, you prime it to over a period of time, uh, so that your waking up is more rapid and with with a greater um, effective uh, transformation from dozy sleepy body and dozy sleepy mind to a clear mind instead of a foggy mind and then when you put new or when you ingest new nutrition instead of literally eating on an old meal in your body you're eating on an old meal that's on the way out and old breath the night before that's on the way out already it's, it makes a vast difference to well-being so in the, in the beginning i mentioned a few times uh, vitality or vigor so I would say that would be an easy five-minute sequence for vitality and vigor um, if we want to describe uh, what kind of practice this is. Any other comments from you, Candice? No, we'd like to hear some requests. So if anybody has any requests for videos that they would like to have us put out there to let us know in the comments as well. All right, so thank you, Candice. Thank you so much, Johan. Namaste. Namaste.